Right now, evacuations are underway at the U.S. Embassy in Haiti as the State Department calculates the risk of increasing gang attacks in Port-au-Prince. That relentless violence operating in a government vacuum has paralyzed cities, families in hiding, stranded, airports, ports shut down, hospitals overrun. The state of emergency putting so many in South Florida in a state of panic for loved ones. Few journalists know Haiti better than Jackie Charles, Caribbean reporter for the Miami Herald, covering Haiti and the evolving issues through the last decades, right up through all night long. Yeah. Welcome. I, I want everyone to know that Jackie has not slept yet, and I <laughs> value that you have come in here to talk about what, give us the, uh, the overnight, what's the up to date? Well, you know, overnight, as you mentioned, um, the U.S embassy has been evacuated well at least they're non-essential employees and we're so still operating yeah so we're still trying <laughs> to figure out you know how many people that was because this was a, a order was similar to this had been sent out a couple of months ago when things got really violent around the embassy and so while there's been a lot of focus about the airport the seaport the reality is is that the area around the u.s embassy has also been under heavy gunfire and president biden personally ordered also that Marines be sent in to further protect the embassy. So now we have U.S. troops involved. Is that no, too no, no? That's, that's stretching it. Too We've stretching. Always, okay. U.S. Marines have always because been in charge that's a, of protecting. That's a real question to yes. to many many people. Like, what is the U.S. role, especially with South Florida's ties? Yes. There are a lot of people looking at their government here and saying, "Please help." So the Biden administration has made it clear that they will not be sending in U.S. troops to yeah. Haiti. And so that leaves one or two options, or maybe three, which is do nothing. Um, there is U.S. and peacekeepers, but we see no movement to do that. Um, and then this multinational security support mission that Kenya offered to lead, and Henri was actually out of the country signing that security agreement when the violence really escalated. Well, that mission has had two problems. Um, legal issues in Kenya, which according to the president has now been cleared up, but then Republicans in Congress are not giving the Biden administration the money that they have promised. And as a result, the money just is not there right now. So we can't tell you when and if this force is going to deploy. So meanwhile, with no force to back up who is there right now fighting these, we, we've been calling them gangs. Do you call them? It's not a gang. Armed, they're armed groups. Armed groups. Yes. Um, who are, uh, would you characterize them in control in certain places right now? Look, the Haitian National Police, which the U.S. funds, and the U.S. just recently got them some additional ammunition because we have an arms embargo on Haiti. They have been doing the best they can to push back the gangs. But the gangs have encircled the airport. They went into the seaport. Um, there was heavy gunfire around the National Palace. We're looking to see if the palace falls. And that is the mm. symbol of, 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 of governance. You know, this is a country already with a weak government, non-existent institutions. And yes, the, the palace itself fell during the earthquake, but there's still a building there. Mm. And the gangs are saying that they're going to go and take the palace. And let's not forget the prison break. So they are in control in a lot of places. And it's, they have made it impossible for people to get anywhere. People are running out of food. The country's running out of oxygen. Hospitals have been forced to shut down. Then maybe even one or two hospitals is even functioning. If that, it's very difficult. So what do they want? What do the gangs want? I know they've, they've said this week publicly they want the prime minister to resign. Our Ariel Henri is somewhere, not there, but somewhere trying to figure uh, out what to unable do. Unable to get back into, yeah. wanting to get back into the country, but, but unable what, to get back. What do they, what do the gangs want to happen? They do not want a foreign force and they want amnesty. Amnesty for their crimes. For their crimes. And then what? Who, who well, we're still also asking, do they want a seat at the negotiating table? Because today the State Department is pushing, you know, Haiti's political and civic leaders to come up with some sort of agreement. I mean, this is the argument that they use in asking Ariel Henry to resign a story that we broke at the Miami Herald this week, despite their denial, was like, well, he has not ceded power. And we've been asking, well, that isn't necessarily the way things happen. But there's been this long negotiation over three years. And the question is today that if you were to get a political deal, will that be enough to tone down the, the crisis, the security crisis? Will the gangs accept this and will they go back into their, their, their neighborhoods? Or do you have to bring some of these 
individuals to the table because right now the way this is being handled, as Robert Faton told us this week, is that the gangs are going to be the arbiter of, you know, of, of, of Haiti's political situation, political future. And, and what, okay, what does that mean, practically speaking, a gang and as an arbiter of a political future? The gangs today are creating havoc on the street. You have a weak police force. You don't even have 9,000 police officers. You have a government that is on the verge of collapse. So tomorrow you get a political deal by a group of well-meaning Haitian individuals who say, we're now going to lead this transition as the U.S. and the Caribbean community um, is asking. Will that guarantee that the fighting is going to stop? That's the big question today. What do you, you know what I learned from you, and yes. I think last time you were here, that the arms that these groups have are from South yes. Florida. I mean, that, that irony in this story is, is a bit overwhelming. It's not even just that the arms, um, the weapons, and the ammunition are from South Florida, but the Haitian National Police was rebuilt by the U.S. The U.S. is the major funder of this force. We have a U.S. arms embargo that prevents what kind of guns they can get, when they can get it, how much ammunition that they can get. And so, and, and you know, our policy years ago was to basically say to Haiti, you have to get rid of your army because they were involved in one too many coups. So today you have a security crisis in a country Yes, um, under former President Martelly and, and Jovenel Moise, they brought back this army, but the army has had a difficult time of getting weapons. Um, this week, Ariel Henry basically deployed them among the state of emergency, but it's a fledgling of force. I mean, we have a crisis that this country cannot deal with on its own. They're doing the best that they can, but everybody's wondering how long before the police can't do it anymore. Police yeah. stations have been attacked and overtaken. Police officers have been killed. I mean, every day, you know, you're getting a new report that there's an armed group here, an armed group there. The U.S. Embassy was forced to evacuate people because the area around the embassy has been looted and vandalized um, by, by gangs. This, this is absolutely a, a real-time crisis in the yes. making, and I know you are on it, and I wish you a little bit of sleep. Um, we will be following very closely the events there, and I, I always appreciate your insights and your depth of knowledge, Jackie Charles. Thank you. Time is not on their side, is correct.